In the previous video, you saw that dynamic random access memory, DRAM, is made up of millions of cells arranged into a vast rectangular array. Each cell includes a transistor and a capacitor. When the capacitor is charged, the cell contains a 1. If it has no charge, the cell contains a 0. Each transistor is connected to a horizontal word line and a vertical bit line. You also saw how an array like this might be divided into two by a row of differential sense amplifiers. The job of these is to detect the values in an entire row of cells, latch onto them and write them back again. In this video, you'll see how one particular cell within the array can be selected for reading or writing. Let's consider a memory array containing only eight rows and eight columns, for simplicity. And, in order to focus on the components that support the array, let's simplify the diagram even further. Now, suppose some of these cells contain binary 1s, shown in red, and some contain binary zeros, shown in blue. We're going to look at the steps taken to read and output this particular binary 1. Here are some of the components that work together to perform this operation. In order to identify a location in memory, we need a memory address. And to convey the memory address, we need an address bus. For an 8x8 array of cells, that's 64 cells in total, we need a 6-line address bus. A 6-line address bus can carry one of 2 to the power 6, that's a total of 64 possible binary values exactly the number of values needed to uniquely identify each cell in the array. Three lines of the address bus are fed into a group of latches, known collectively as the row address buffer. These latches are then connected to a row address decoder. The binary value carried by these three address lines uniquely identifies one particular row within the cell array. This value is therefore known as the row address. The other three lines of the address bus are fed into a group of latches known as the column address buffer, which in turn is connected to a column multiplexer and demultiplexer. The binary value carried by these three address lines uniquely identifies one particular column in the array, and is therefore known as the column address. The latches that make up the column and row address buffers do as their names suggest. They latch onto, that is, they temporarily store the row address and the column address. Latches are so versatile, they are described in detail in a different series of videos. The row and column address buffers allow the row address and the column address to be input into the memory module separately, by virtue of a system known as memory address multiplexing. This means the memory module can have fewer external pins than would otherwise be needed. Keeping the number of pins down is important, particularly when it comes to very large memories with many more addressable locations than you can see here. In this case, only three external pins are needed for a 6-bit memory address. A 32-bit address, on the other hand, would need only 16 address pins. Since this memory is only capable of reading or writing one bit at a time, only one external pin is required for the data. You can see this on the bottom right of the diagram. Data pins are bidirectional. They can be used for both read and write operations. A typical DRAM would have many more data pins. I'll talk about scaling up this model in a later video. External pins are required not just for the memory address and data, but also for various control signals, and of course power. For example, an extra pin is required for each buffer, so they can be enabled one after another while the memory address is being input. These are known as the row address strobe and the column address strobe, RAS and CAS for short. Notice that RAS and CAS are both high at the moment. Each is enabled by setting it to a low voltage, so these pins are said to be active low. That's the meaning of the horizontal bar above the letters. A memory module will also have a write enable pin to indicate if data is being written to or read from the module. This too is active low. Timing is critical when it comes to the operation of a DRAM module. 
so it will contain some additional circuitry responsible for ensuring that everything happens at the right time. For example, a read cycle includes the following steps. The bit lines are pre-charged to about half of the voltage supplied to the DRAM module. The computer's memory controller applies the row address to the address pins and the row address strobe is enabled. As soon as this happens, the whole read cycle is triggered. The bit lines are now disconnected from their pre-charging circuits and allowed to float. The row address is decoded. Exactly how a decoder works is covered in another video. Suffice to say for now, this decoder takes a 3-bit memory address and uses it to select just one of eight possible outputs. The appropriate word line is therefore asserted. The entire row of cell values is latched into the sense amplifiers, including the value of the cell that we want to read. Reading a row of cells is a destructive process. It has the effect of partially discharging the capacitors of any cells that contain a 1, and partially charging up the capacitors of any cells that contain a 0. Nevertheless, the original contents of the row are safely latched. The column address is presented at the address pins, and the column address strobe is enabled. The column address is latched into the column address buffer. The column address is used by the column multiplexer to select the appropriate output value from one of the sense amplifiers. Multiplexers and demultiplexers are covered in more detail in another video. Suffice to say for now, this multiplexer selects one output value from eight possible input values. The bit we're interested in, in this case a binary one, is directed towards the data buffer. The row address strobe is disabled and the output becomes available on the external data pin. The final stage of the read cycle is to refresh the row using the contents of the sense amplifiers. The column address strobe is now disabled, the word line is deasserted and the output data is no longer available. All that remains is for the bit lines to be pre-charged in readiness for the next cycle. The sequence of operations in a DRAM read cycle requires split-second timing. Some things can happen together, but others have to wait their turn. Ultimately, a read cycle has to be quick, but it also has to be accurate. A basic one-bit read cycle can be described with a diagram like this. It shows that the row address is presented at the external address pins first. A short amount of time is allowed for propagation delays, then the row address strobe is enabled. Remember, it's active low. The cycle begins. More time is allowed to latch and decode the address, and for the slowest part of the cycle, to sense and latch the row. Next, the column address is presented at the external pins. Then it too is strobed and latched. When the row address strobe is disabled, the output data becomes available, and it remains available until finally the column address strobe is disabled. A write cycle is very similar to a read cycle. Suppose, for example, we want to write a binary 1 into this cell, which currently contains a binary 0. The bit lines are pre-charged. The appropriate row address is applied to the address pins by the memory controller, and the row address is strobed. The row address is decoded, and one of the word lines is asserted, just like in a read cycle. The existing row values are then latched in the sense amplifiers, just like in a read cycle. But at this stage, the input data is placed on the data line and a write enable signal is applied. The column address is now presented at the address pins and strobed. This triggers the operation of a demultiplexer, which loads the new value into the appropriate sense amplifier according to the column address. The row is then refreshed as before, but this time with modified data. The write enable input is then disabled, followed by the row address strobe, and then the column address strobe, and the bit lines are pre-charged once again. A 1-bit DRAM write cycle 
can be described with this timing diagram. The row address is presented at the external address pins first, and then strobed. The column address is presented at the pins, but at the same time a write enable signal is applied and the input data is made available. Now the column address is strobed. Write enable is then disabled, so input is no longer accepted. Then finally, the row address and the column address strobes are disabled.